when he got to say amen. 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 We got one amen. Huh? No, Second Corinthians amen. chapter 4, verse 8. You get yourself a Bible. When you got to say amen. Amen. Before we get started, give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We pray today, Father. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank
right here in the book of Psalms 37 and 24. Though you fall, you shall not utterly be cast down. For the Lord upholded him with his hand. May God put out his spiritual hand and lift you up. May God lift you up from the depths and the recesses of your mind. May God lift you up from the brokenness in your family. May God lift you up from the brokenness in your finances. God said, I got a hand to you. But he says, you got to reach and you got to grab it. God ain't going to do what you can do for yourself. God says, you got to do your part. If you do your part, I'll do my part. God says, you got to reach your hand out and grab my hand. You got to come to church. You got to read your Bible. You got to tie. You got to be nice to people. You got to be loving. God said, do your part and watch what I do for you. May God lift you up out of the pit of hell when the devil has you. May he protect you from the enemy as the enemy tried to destroy you. May God protect you and push you through the storms and the rain. Because God said, you're going to make it, child of God. Because he said, never have I seen the righteous forsaken or his seed breaking for bread. God said, you are righteous. What makes you righteous? Because you want to do more right than doing wrong. You want to put God before you put yourself. You want to love God and trust him. God says, you are righteous. And he said, never have I seen his child begging for bread. God says, you are the maker. Give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. Next go to Psalms 100. Psalm 100, thank you Jesus. Psalm 100, Psalm 100, Psalm 100, Psalm 100. Go down to verse 30. Pray we just start with Psalm 100. Psalm 100 says this, it says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And then he says, serve the Lord with gladness. Serve the Lord with gladness. God said, make a joyful noise to me. God says, you need to be praising him when you're going through. You need to be praising him when it don't make sense. God said, praise me in spite of the negative thing that you're going through. He says, you're going through a tough time. Make a joyful now. You need to learn how to say hallelujah. Walk through your house proclaiming hallelujah. The neighbors that think you're crazy. Hallelujah. And God says, he will rebuke the devourer for your name's sake. God said, make a joyful noise. When you're going through the midst of your storm, learn how to give God praises. And it might sound crazy, but if you can praise God in a mortuary, he will bless you with things that you ain't seen yet. If you can praise God in a courtroom, I remember one day I went to court. Y'all know I've been in jail seven times. I went to court and I screamed, hallelujah, and everybody looked at me, but I didn't care what they were looking at because God gave me the victory. God said, give me a praise in the courtroom. Give me praise in a hospital room. Give me praise at a gas station. I praised God at a gas station one time because I didn't have no money, but the tank was all full. I said, give God praise wherever you go, and God will be there for you when you can't be there for yourself. Next, keep reading. It says, verse 3, verse 4, enter to his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. Bless his name. And verse 5 said, for the Lord is good. And his mercy is everlasting. And his truth endured for all generations. God says, my word is true. He said, before the beginning began to begin, I thought of you. I called you into existence. He spoke your name and you came out. Do you think you're here by accident? Do you think you're here by providence? God says, I called you into existence. And he says, you're here because I have purpose for your life. God says, you're important to me. But he says, give me praise. That's why we sing. We don't sing because I think I can sing. I know I can sing. But the only thing I can give God is singing. And I sing and I give him praise. And when you see little Michael Hibbert with the bad boys giving him praise, he rain down blessing. Because when praises go up, blessings come down. Learn how to praise God in your storm. Learn how to praise God in your sickness. Learn how to praise God. And if you can praise him, he'll be there for you. Let's turn to Psalms 44. Psalms 44. Psalms 44. Thank you, Jesus. Psalms 44. Psalms 44. Go down to verse 3. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 44, verse 3 says this. For they got not the land in possession by their own sword, neither did their own arm save them. But Lord, thy right hand and thy arm in thy light of thy countenance, because thou hast had favor unto them. If you sit here tonight, 
It's not because of you. God says, AJ, there's favor on your life. He says, I've kept you. You didn't keep yourself. You didn't protect yourself. Some of you say, well, well, Lord, I'm going through. Lord, I'm having a hard time. Lord, it's miserable all around me. But God said you're still here. Sometimes the greatest testimony that you got is I'm still here. Sometimes the greatest thing you can say, I'm still here. Yeah, I'm going through, but I'm still here. Because there are a lot of people who ain't here no more. You still here. That means you still got an opportunity to change and do something different. If you change your muscle and change your thought, things change around you. God said, renew your mind because I have something new that I'm going to do through you. God said, you're still here. Give me praise. Give me honor. You're still here. And he said, to give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. Because the best is yet to come. God said, the best is yet to come. God says, you haven't seen your finest day yet. You haven't seen the greatest accomplishment yet. God says, keep living. Keep walking with me, child of God. He says, I'm going to turn your story into a great novel. I'm going to turn that novel into a great movie. And a whole lot of people want to get saved because of what you went through. Yesterday, I went down the street. Right over here on Compton Boulevard is a computer store. And I'm talking to the man that owned the store. And I was telling him about my friend and his troubles. And he said, let me tell you something. I had to bury his son and go to the mortuary and identify his body. I had to bury four sisters and one niece who could kill themselves by suicide. And I have not turned from God yet. God said, if you can praise me in spite of what you're going through, he'll make a way so he can get through that thing. Give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. Praise God. Regardless of the storm. Turn next, Ephesians 4 and 23. Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians 4 and 23. Ephesians 4 and 23. Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians 4 and 23. Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians 4 and 23. Ephesians 4 and 23. God says this. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Why is that important? If you change your mind, God will change the situation. Some of you say, I'm still going through. Change your mind. If you learn how to look at things differently, things start to change around you. And when things start to change around you, now you feel different. If you have joy in your heart, now God can get joy to your mind. And now your body can feel joy. But if you look at everything like I'm coming down, God says you're going to be down. Look at things differently. You got to renew your mind, renew your vision, and God can focus you in a different direction. Because if you change your attitude, God can change your altitude, and he's going to pull you up out of this thing. Sometimes you got to realize God is just waiting on you to change your mind. If you change your mind, watch the things start to change around you. Watch your children start to do right. Watch your marriage start to get better. Watch your finances start to improve because you renewed your mind. Matter of fact, turn to the book of Romans 12 and 2. Thank you, Jesus. Romans 12 and 2. Hallelujah. Thank you for this word, Lord, because I showed it that one. Romans 12 and 2. Thank you, Jesus. Romans 12 and 2. Satan, you missed again. Romans 12 and 2. Romans 12 and 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove that which is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. God says once again, change your mind. He said the greatest thing you can do is have a new mind. If you have a new mind that says, God, I'm going to serve you regardless of what I'm going through. I'm going to serve you in spite of my sickness. I'm going to serve you in spite of my children. I'm going to serve you in spite of my bad relationship. I'm going to serve you. God says, get out the way, devil. Let me clear the path because my child is coming through. God's going to make a way for you. How do I know that? Because you're looking at it. 179 pounds of mistakes. But when I put God first, he said, watch me bless you. The hand is going to stand on the side. They're going to throw things at you and throw insults at you. But watch them bless. Because God said, you cannot be cursed if I have blessed you. God says, your blessings cannot 
be reversed. God says I will bless you in spite of what they say about you. May God continue to bless you in spite of the things that they say about you. May God continue to lift you up in spite of the people pulling you down. May God keep you up in spite of the negative things. Because God says you are blessed even though you're going through the rain. You're going through the pain. But you're still blessed. Matter of fact, turn me next. To the Romans 13 and Romans 13 and 10. Romans 13 and 10. God wants you to know this. Romans 13 and 10. Thank you, Jesus. It says, Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is fulfilling of the law. The Bible also says, Love covers a multitude of sins. Let's put that together. God says, Some of y'all need to love a little more. Some of y'all need to love a bit harder. Some of y'all need to forgive things of the past. Some of y'all need to cover the mistakes that you made 30, 30 years ago. God says, Love. We need to learn how to lead in love. Because if you lead in love, you can change a whole community. Let God see you leading in love. Let God take you to another level. Let God see you doing the thing that you haven't done before. And the very last thing. Turn me next. Turn me next. To Psalms 44. Psalms 44. Very good. Psalms. Acts 13 and 1. Thank you, Jesus. Acts 13 and 1. I told you I didn't have a scripture. They, they got erased on the computer. Acts 13 and 1. Acts 13 and 1. Thank you, Jesus. Acts 13 and 1. Better yet, go to Exodus 14 and 1. Thank you, Jesus. Exodus 3 and 14. Why do you keep changing? Because I ain't got nothing written down here. Exodus 3 and 14. That's why you need a real Bible. Because if you got a digital one, the devil can erase it. Acts 3 and 14. Acts 3 and 14. Thank you, Jesus. Exodus 3 and 14. Exodus 3 and 14. Thank you, Father. You watching the scripture being written right before your eyes. Exodus 3 and 14. Exodus 3 and 14. And the Lord God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he says, Thus shall y'all say unto the children of Israel, I am have sent me unto you. And God said, Moreover, Moses, Thus shall I say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jokin, has sent me unto you. This is his name forever and ever, in memorial unto all generations. Then it says, Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say unto them, The Lord God of your fathers and the God of Abraham, of Isaac, of Jason, appeared unto me, saying, I have surely visited you this day and seen which is done to you in your Egypt. And here's the beat. And he has said, I will bring you up out of your affliction. God wants you to know, I am is on your case. I am is in the situation. Satan and all his demons in hell can't stand up against I am. God says, I am your healing. I am your deliverance. I am your finances. I am your health. I am your strength. I am whatever you need me to be. God says, I am. I thank God for being I am in my life because I wasn't. I wasn't anything. But when God stood up and he said, I am your resume. I am your FICO score. I am your health. I am your livelihood. I am your love. I am your strength. I am your support. God, give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. God wants you to know I am is here. God ain't went nowhere. He's right there with you as you're walking through this thing. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He says, I'm going to be with you through the hard time. I'm going to be with you through the good time. I'm going to be with you when you're somewhere you ain't got no business being. But he says, I am. And then he says, I will bring you out of your Egypt. See, your Egypt is that trap. It looks good. See, some of us, we start off smoking a little bit of something. Then we start off popping a little bit of pills. Then we start off with a little lean. And, and next thing you know, we all strong and drugged out. God says, I am your deliverance. You ain't got to smoke that thing no more. I am your healing. You ain't got to do that thing no more. God says, I'm going to pull you out that thing. Don't you let the devil trap you. Because God says, I am is here. And I am ain't never went nowhere. God says, I am here for you. 
And as long as I be for you, the devil and hell can't be against you. And then give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. Everybody stand. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> I, 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 I left home. I was like, oh God, we're going to see what happens. And then give by the hand clap. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Sometimes you will go through some tough things. And they won't make sense. And you can't figure it out. Well, y'all see me up there falling out crying. It ain't because I'm trying to show up. Believe that. I'm macho man guy. But I remember sleeping on the concrete. I remember getting kicked out of school. I remember having to sell sandwiches when I couldn't find a job. My last job before I left college, I used to carry around a cooler. And I would sell sandwiches. That was my last job. I learned how to fix cars. Not because I knew how to fix cars. Because I didn't have no money. So I said, how can I make money? And somebody said, you can fix cars. I had a tool set. So I didn't know what I was doing. I was messing up everybody's car. I didn't know what the heck I was doing. I was fixing up. But eventually I learned I did all these things. That's called struggle. So when you see me up here falling out crying, it's because I remember the hard time. But what I do remember, God got me through. God got me over. God kept me up. He supported me when the scandals came out about my name, when the crazy things happened, when I got fired from God, when they left me in court, when I got the court paper. One time I went to work, I got a check for $117, and I had $4,000 of bills left. But God kept me, and he delivered me. So when you see me crying, I remember that angle that was with me. God wants you to know you're not by yourself. The devil wants you to think that you're alone. So pick up this bottle and drink it. Smoke this thing and forget. The devil is a liar in hell. God says I'm with you. You don't need this drink. You don't need this smoke. You don't need these pills. You don't need this lean. All you need is me. Because God says I will deliver you through that thing. You got a hand clap. Hallelujah. You got to learn how to trust God. Because God will help you when nobody's there for you. He wants you to know you're not alone. And the thing that you're going through is not by accident. God knew you would be where you are in your life. He knew that you would have these pains and you would have these stresses and you would have this disappointment and you would have these things pulling on you all over. But God says just keep walking. Keep walking and be patient. You got to learn how to trust God and walk and just say, Lord, you know what? Trust in you. Because sometimes all you got is your faith. But guess what? God said that's enough. God said that's enough to get you over. You look at that 179 pounds of failure. You look at that 179 pounds of God said it's enough. You look at that 179 pounds of God said I'm going to get you through. You look at that 179 pounds of God says you can make it. God says you can make it. He said you'll get through this thing. But you got to keep walking and keep trusting. And close your eyes and say, God, I'm walking by faith. I believe your word. I'm going to start reading my Bible. I'm going to start tithing. I'm going to stay in church. I'm going to stay on my knees. I'm going to be good to others. And I'm going to forgive those who hurt me. Some of you still got hate in your heart. God says, I'm not going to bless you till you forgive. You got to let that thing go. You got to push it out of your mind and say, I forgive my father, my mother. I forgive that man that violated me. I forgive that woman that cheated on me. I forgive. And if you can do that, watch God bless you. Give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. And then everybody grab a hand. Grab a hand. Start over, Peter. Thank you. Grab a hand. By your hands. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for everything that you've done. Father, we thank you, Father, for being a God of providence. A God to lead when we can't follow because we're blind. A God to give vision when there is none. A God of provision when there is none. A God who stands for our side and, and has a hand in front of us that says, Come follow me. Continue to lead us, Father. We bind the enemy, Father. We bind spirits that are not of you. 
We release the spirit of alcoholism. We release the spirit of drug addiction. We release the spirit of pornography addiction. We release the spirit of nepotism. We release the spirit of greed. And we say, Father, we follow you in love. We follow you in truth. We follow you with our heart. We follow you, Father, with our eyes. Squeeze the hand next to you. I squeeze life into that hand. I squeeze prosperity to that hand. I squeeze vision and purpose into that hand. So these young people become the head and not the tail. So they become victorious and never defeated. So there's no weapon formed against them shall prosper. And Father, we ask that you give them strength, Father. Strength for this week. Strength for this month. Cover the finances. Cover the health. Cover their mind. Protect their family, Father. We release the spirit of healing. Healing in the heart, Father. Healing in the mind, Father. Healing in the home, Father. Healing, Father. And give them victory over the devil. We ask that tonight in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. Give by the hand clap. Hallelujah. Up to